be in control of your happiness, you know, like, <laughs> like, like be in control of your own happiness and, and figure out what it takes to make you happy, to make you feel fulfilled, like to make you feel accomplished, like what does it take for you to do that and then perfect that. The good and the bad news for me is that I know what it takes to make me uh, fulfilled and it's not just one thing. I mean, it's it's my family, it's the relations with my 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 you know my loved ones and and my friends, my community. Uh, but then it's there's this other part of me where it's like I need to do kind of heavy things. You know, my mom said to me once, "If you can't be true to yourself, then you can't be true to anybody." And I'm just that's where I'm starting. So I'm starting here, and I'm working out from there. And if I can bring myself happiness. Uh, and, and bring myself fulfillment, then maybe I can spread that. I mean, I, I think I was fortunate that I grew up where I had people not like me for the color that I was. And so that made me realize that, that people aren't just going to like you. That they don't have, and even if you do great things and you're completely, you know, a good person, it still doesn't matter. And that, and that ultimately you start to realize that if you get people to react, then you're doing something, and it's not, and the reaction might not be positive. You might provoke somebody, and they might resent it. And 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 that people in general, and I find myself guilty of this all the time. If everybody thinks it's great, I just don't like it, just to be different. So people sometimes want to be different, you know, uh, to the point of you might do something great, and if enough people are saying that that was a great thing and they like it, that automatically just provokes a whole other group to say they they don't like it and it sucks. So which. If, as long as you're not trying to please everybody, then you're good with it. And you go, okay, well, great. And that's an enlightening moment. As soon as you realize that, you just go, okay, listen, I got to focus on, you know, the immediate people within the house, within the walls. And then, and then I'll let that stuff outside worry about itself. I mean, I, I probably wouldn't have done it if I, you know, if Gabby wasn't going to do it, obviously. Uh, but I'm like, if she's going to do it, then listen. If you really think about it, you just you, you're just honored by the the fact that you're even considered. And you know, I think it's easy for us to get caught up in our in ourselves and start thinking that we mean more than we mean and all these things in in life. But you know, uh, my friend John McEnroe, the tennis player, once said to me, he goes, you know, don't be offended when somebody wants your picture, but start to worry when they stop. It was a little weird, um, you know, being naked and. You know, but I was with Gabby, and so that made it a little, you know, we get naked together, you know, hopefully more than sometimes. Uh, but uh, so, you know, that, that part of it was, was that, that made it a little bit better. Uh, and again, you know, it was just business. I mean, it's take a picture, so we just go, and, you know, and it's not like some weird thing where you're like, you know, you're just, you're, we were conservative about it, and, and get the picture, get what you need, and, um, and it was cold that day too, by the way. <laughs> Let's get this thing over with. <laughs> I'm always hurt. You know, people talk about, you know, being 100% and I'm like, there's no such thing as 100%. I, I, right? 100% ends when you're born and you take your first breath of toxic earth air. And then after that, it's all downhill. And so for me, I just, you know, I just, it's all part of the deal. It's how you function with what, you know, the injuries that you have and, and, uh, I've learned more about my physicality from my injuries than any of my successes. And so, you know, I, I use that as learning uh, a tool and, and, you know, to better understand myself. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's ongoing. It's an ongoing battle of breaking it and putting it back together again. That's just the process. You go out, you use it, and then you abuse it, and then you got to fix it and do it again. <laughs> I think I really didn't know real fear until I had children. That's when I learned fear. I, I learned fear of what could happen to them. The fear of what could be, I mean, that's, that's like handcuffs, you know. That's, you're locked up, you might as well go in the corner and you're done, you're out. So, but, but nothing like some children to make you feel like, you know, to feel scared for, for them because you don't have control over their lives. and. With you, it's a different story when you're doing, I mean, you know, hey, have you, because fear and scared are different, you know, 
And, and I think being scared, I think that's healthy. If you're in a dangerous situation, you should be a little worried about it. It's meant to heighten your vision and make you hear better and hopefully make, make you make better decisions. But fear of what hasn't happened or what could happen, that's, you know, that's some, what they, how do they describe that? That's an insanity. <laughs> Honesty. If you really want to be happy, you got to be honest. Honest with yourself, honest with your, with your friends, honest with your partner, honest. And love. But those two live together. Love and honesty. Got to be honest. Got to love. Impossible to be happy without honesty and love.